A sequel to a great game must be a very difficult job. Do you try and enhance what you had at the risk of being called more of the same? Do you completely innovate and perhaps disrupt a delicate balance that will alienate fans of the original? Sometimes the right answer comes out of nowhere and what ends up working is something fans of the original game may not have even known they wanted to begin with. Gaming has seen many successful sequels and many many thousands more that just failed to hit the mark. One hit wonders are not just a phenomenon in music, as gaming history is littered with tons of titles that could never recapture the original game's magic. Ori and the Will of the Wisp thankfully avoids that problem entirely. Will of the Wisp actually reminds me a lot of Super Metroid, and no I don't mean to make the same Metroidvania comparison that's become so common. I mean in terms of how they approached Ori and the Will of the Wisp and how they tried to follow it up. The opening of Will of the Wisp will quickly remind players of everything they love from the original. The absolutely stunning music and visuals, the adorable characters, its emotional story and super tight controls. Not long after the opening moments, Will of the Wisp finds Ori lost deep in a new world, separated from Kuro's child, Ku, and once again a new adventure starts. Despite seeming similar on the surface, Will of the Wisp quickly moves to differentiate itself from its predecessor. In a brilliant move, the very first ability Ori gains isn't anything from the original game. Instead, it's a sword. That's right, a sword. Right away the inclusion of a more direct form of combat really sets the mood and changes the moment to moment encounter design through the entire experience. Shortly after that, you come across some NPCs, you slowly gain new combat abilities, you meet vendors, you encounter side quests, and a whole slew of new items, upgrades, and mechanics. Each area you visit through most of the game's first act will carefully add another layer for players to experience. The various abilities add some nice wrinkles to Ori's arsenal, and a couple of styles are actually reminiscent of some of the genre's best. Dead Cells and Hollow Knight, for example, Influences from the modern age of this genre are all seen and felt in Will of the Wisp without it feeling derivative. All of these additions wouldn't be much to speak of without this genre's most important feature as far as I'm concerned, and that is the map and level design have to be exceptional for any game like this to truly stand out, especially as we've seen some true classics mixed in with dozens and dozens of forgettable Metroidvania titles tossing their hat into the ring over the last few years. Each new section is completely breathtaking. Moon Studios finds a way to create absolutely stunning locations and always keeps the action presentable. Carefully designed visuals make sure areas with tricky platforming or heavy combat aren't obstructed with heavy foreground or background elements that are distracting. Likewise, they build each area with such care and finesse each location seamlessly bleeding into the next. The layout also impresses as even without the map the various environments are easy to remember because they are built so well together. The plot also picks up various themes from the previous Ori and moves them forward in some spectacular ways. The amount of new characters and enemies you will encounter are all so unique and breathtaking I don't want to spoil any of them here. One of the new features that I will talk about briefly is a hub that you can slowly build out as the game progresses. This new home will be the centerpiece of your travels as every new ally you make will come and make it a base of operations. All of this comes together to make Ori and the Will of the Wisps a much bigger and better game in every conceivable way. The only issue I will say I had was running into some very odd performance bugs. As of March 9th, the day one patch was released and it had eliminated all of the issues I was having with it on consoles. On PC, it had no issues at all and it runs tremendous, despite having a lack of some more common visual settings that you see in most PC titles. One final element I must speak on is the absolutely incredible composition by Gareth Coker. Every song from the main theme to the somber pianos help really score each scene and story beat to perfection. The rise and fall of percussion when the tempo ramps up and little flourishes abound really help complete this package. Ori and the Blind Forest was a breath of fresh air when it released. Ori and the Will of the Wisp is a tremendous achievement. 
It's bigger, better, with more nuance to a story backed up with tons of depth to the platforming and combat systems. It's an easy recommendation, and in what's sure to be a crowded year for video games, it stands out as a surefire Game of the Year candidate and my favorite Xbox exclusive that I've played in a long time. Ori and the Will of the Wisps gets a 9.5. It is absolutely incredible, and even if you had not played the original, this game is easy to recommend. You're sure to have a great time with it, and the excellent platforming, combat, and story all combine to make something nobody's going to forget anytime soon. I hope you enjoyed my review. If you want to see the written review, please check out rectifygaming.com. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you want to see more, including the first hour of gameplay, subscribe to my channel, like this review, and I'll be bringing more Ori to you in the future. Thank you all so much, be safe, have a good one, and I'll see all of you next time.